Welcome to Finland and welcome to Eno, Joen Su and follow Jukola and Venla Relay 2017. My name is Mikko Reitti and here beside me Jan Prohatska from Kalevarasti and we are now starting this live Jukola live coverage here from Eno. And soon, in 12 minutes, when will the women start their interesting, interesting relay or what, Jan? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I was there in the forest, and I have to say it's a really nice forest, but technically demanding. So I'm really waiting uh, how the girls will manage, and uh, I guess it will be really tough race, and we can expect some mistakes. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, yesterday, the course setters uh, were telling us that. Uh, the women's relay will be really, really demanding, and it's not yet uh, until the winner is at the finish because everything is possible. And in the last meters of the race, uh, this Harpati terrain is very demanding. You have been running there many times. Uh, many are expecting quite tough terrain, and uh, the visibility is not so good. What do you say about the uh, terrain? Ah, uh, it's. Uh it's uh, the leaves are uh, there in the forest uh, even the winter was lasting quite long here but now it's a uh, real summer and uh, this uh, lowers the visibility down so it means you have to really use your compass especially in the control attacking because controls are, are not so visible from far away so yeah it will be Difficult, I guess. So, uh, if, you, if we are waiting for the GPS uh, tracking and so, so it may be uh, we are coming to see some uh, not so straight ahead to the controls uh, GPS tracks uh, as we has used to be. Though this terrain offers us a much, much uh, demanding controls and demanding orienteering. The weather here at uh, Eno and Joensu is beautiful, a sunny day and temperature is over 20 degrees, so also this makes this uh, different uh, competition very demanding for the women. Uh, here today, before the race, I met uh, Mika Ilomaki from Finnish Orienteering Federation and he was quite happy for the organizers and uh, now next uh, we are a little bit hearing what he had to say and what were his expectations for today's Venla Relay. Finnish Orienteering Federation, what are your feelings here just before Venla and Yukola Relays? Actually, it's very exciting feeling right now and, and, and sun, sun is shining and this is the most most warmest weather this so far in Finland this summer, so it's really great feeling. So it's going to be a tough and demanding relay for the women, also for the uh, men. Uh, for your point of view, how do you feel now, just before Jukola and Venla? It, it's it's really ni nice feeling, and, and I, I'm really sure that organizers have done really good job, and everything is ready here, and and we will have nice broadcast in in Finnish national TV and also this international web TV, so uh, I think we will have spectators from 50 different nations around the world. That would be nice. Uh, now, before Venla Ray, which, which teams are your favorites? Oh, my favorite. Of course, I, 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 I hope that the Finnish team will win win this year. Uh, I think, like, Tampereen Pyrintö is really good one, and Asko Pohjantähti. But I, I, yesterday I traveled together with Natalia Kemperle with train to Joensuu from Helsinki, and and if there will be some foreign foreign team, I, I hope that uh, Natalia's uh, team will win from Sweden. We'll see. Now I let you enjoy the Yukola atmosphere and follow the winner of play. Have a nice day. Thank you. So here we had Mika Ilomäki's thoughts and also the favorites. Uh, he mentioned Pyrintö, Pohjantähti, Alfta Ösa. He traveled with uh, Natalia Kemberle for so, uh, that's the, that team is also here on our papers, one of the favorites, Natalia Kemper was leading Tiu Mila with a good margin and then make, uh, you could say, quite easy mistake uh, at the end and uh, Tuve Alexanderson came and took everything. Also one question is that how much is the cap that Tuve can start behind uh, all the others for the last leg? 
<laughs> what do you think, believe? <laughs> yeah. I guess everyone was impressed in the Omela. That was amazing. It was just Judith who could hang behind and she was struggling a lot. And Judith doesn't start this year. So Jete Borg Majorna was fifth last year, but they are missing the last leg runners. So I think everything is quite open for Storatuna, I would say. That's true, that's true. Anne Marcel, Marcel starting Sturatuna's relay. Halden, they have missed now many good runners from Tiumila team. Mari Fasting, Hine Hallan, Steiner and Sabine Hausfeld are not running for Halden. Hausfeld is running for this new club, Uel Norska, which is quite interesting combination of athletes. Yeah, it's a Swiss club and uh, yeah, it's uh, amazingly strong. I think they took uh, uh, Hausweird from Halden and then uh, there is still Simone Nigli, yeah. quite experienced with this technical terrain. I think she can do a lot and suddenly we have uh, one of the favorite team. Uh, Sarina Jensen is not running for leading goal. She's running for uh, also. Norska, and we have also Celia Kroljaren, the Norwegian yeah. national team runner. So all of them are quite experienced national team runners or former national team runners. I guess it will suit them well. That's true uh, of the top, top, top Finns team, Pyrinto and Pohjan Tähti. Last year's second and third are one of the favorites together with Kove. Uh, after us and Stura Tuna, we just mentioned also leading uh, and Jöte Bori with the good teams. But Jukola, it's not only for the top athletes. Uh, I me met here earlier a Brazilian runner who was competing earlier this week in Hamina for the World Military Orienteering Championships uh, here in Finland. And here is some uh, thoughts about the Brazilian girl when she is heading for towards the first leg. from Team Brazil. Hello, Camila. This is your first Yukola ever. How come the Team Brazil is here? The Team Brazil was in the military championship on Amina, and now we are in our first Yukola in Finland. My first time in Europe, so the first are very different for me, but my feeling is the best. What are your expectations? What do you know about the forest and the terrain? I know what I saw in Amina, <laughs> only this. Um, a lot of stones and, and uh, white forest, very good. I like it. But I believe today it's going to be a little bit different because it's going to be hilly and a little bit green on the map. Um, it, what is your aim as a position maybe, or time? Uh, aim? Aim. Uh, how what the position will be at the finish? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know because then our first you call them. So uh, many many teams. The first time uh, that we saw a lot of people like this in Brazil, the national national uh, championship only 500 people, and now more than 16,000. <laughs> A lot of people for us. I wish you very good luck and hopefully enjoyable moments at the uh, Inno Terrain here. Thank you, thank you. Good luck. And here we have now women ready for the start. Uh, it looks to be that there are 10 teams, uh, 20 teams side by side, uh, 10 teams in a row. And it's a big, big row because there is more than 1,300 teams. And also you can contact us by social media, hashtag Yukola Live, hashtag Yukola 2017. By Twitter or then Instagram, you can send also your best wishes from home sofas around the world following this Yukola relay. Here is the start teams. And you also noticed here, Jan, that uh, Anima Jafinke running this year for Tampere Burinta back in home club uh, last year for Holland. Yeah, I think uh, this makes uh, Tampere and Burinta even stronger than they were last year. And they were uh, second, so 
I guess uh, they can improve, even improve their position and that would be a big uh, happening for a finish, I guess. That's true. Uh, Pyrintö is a tough team. Uh, Karhola, Finke, Kinni and Harju, Kinni and Harju both uh, were in the top at uh, World Cup uh, beginning in Finland. Uh, Harju was seventh and Kinni thirteenth in overall results and both ran very well. And as Pohjan tähti, a quite equal team Hataja, Joensu, Haja maintaining many many years running together although Hataja young athlete first this is her second year there but uh, they've been together quite a lot and KV Ulkonen, Ukskoski, Niittynen, Mironova two young runners in the beginning but then Niittynen and Smetlana Mironova uh, two times world military champion from this week so KV can be also top 10 teams of course yeah, it seems uh, as the last legs are usually making the result, they are the decisive ones, so it's really important to have a strong runner in the end. That's true, and there are tough runners in the league. Jotepan Majunoko have Lina Strand after us, as, as we said, Kemperle, they're ending Sturatuna, Alexanderson, Anna Bachman for leading uh, Baimio, Ida Marines, Björgun. Norwegian uh, came for the Pioneer this year and here you can see this beautiful beautiful image from Eno and Joensu and these teams uh, it's wonderful wonderful to see all <laughs> my hair is coming up because it's so so always awesome. so so beautiful and now we have only 10 seconds to the start so now everything is ready for 40th Juvenla relay in history over, over 1,300 teams are starting in a couple of seconds. And there they go. What amazing sight uh, here starting the race. Uh, first 500 meters. Uh, it's uh, very hard running towards the starting place. And there we have uh, the top teams of course, of course in the league. Number 10 there, Tiefko Göteborg and Ingrid Nure starting very well, and here is the group behind. Have you been running the first leg in the world? Some of the stuff that realized you have been in. Even the Yukola, I remember the start in the Mikkel Stadium, there we nearly crashed this car which was starting. And I think this place is pretty well selected because uh, there is a lot of space and I think if you feel well and you are starting from a row behind you can get the position you would like to enter the forest because afterwards in the forest it's much more difficult to pass some runners and we can see that some of the uh, later runners are already passing uh, but the favorites are in front of course. Of course, of course they are just reading uh, the first uh, Two controls and which were heading, heading and many, not many from the top teams are asking which which control do you have. It's uh, then in the last part when they are shouting uh, the numbers of the controls already. Uh, this is first time that the uh, Yukola is held so in the center of a small or a bigger village. Now we are here in the center of Eno, as you can see. They are just passing the church and heading towards the starting place, which is quite close to the graveyard of the Eno area. But the terrain, it starts immediately after the start point. Yeah, uh, it's a uh, straight and quite technical area. And, uh, but there is a long way to the start, of course. But I think uh, uh, it was because of the arena and everyone is prepared in New Cola that we have to run some longer way to the starting point. That's true, but uh, it makes it also that they are starting smoothly at this beginning, because uh, as we said, uh, the terrain starts from the start point. It's uh, this Harpati, as it's called, this big hill here at the uh, beside Eno. Yeah, and here, demanding. here in the front we can see Anna Klingenberg from Yerla. Uh, she was starting 19, we didn't mention her, but she was uh, second on Kiyomila in the first leg and she's a former national team runner and I think she will be one of the favorites of the first legs 
Of course, uh, Jarla is a strong team in overall, but I don't expect them in the top five. But at least in the first leg, I think we should uh, have a look on her. That's true, and also Alva Olsson from Linköping Suko has been running very well this uh, springtime. Uh, and maybe we can wait also her to be in the top uh, top from the first leg. And then one we should mention, we could change, is Sari Antonen from Keurun Kisalia starting with the competition number 118. Often seen in the uh, top positions at the uh, Jukola and Venla relay. Yeah, and we have also Lillian Forsgren from Tisaren. Uh, I was a bit surprised to see her on the first leg. That's She's true. a national team runner, Swedish national team runner, so it will be interesting also. But now we are back in the, in the snake of the runners. Yes, this is, but uh, as uh, here in Finland, Jukola uh, is uh, Orienteer's Christmas. It's the birthday, it's every holiday. You must come to Jukola. It's one thing you have to experience. And we hope that uh, in the future also many, many teams from uh, all over Europe uh, come here and experience this uh, feeling of Jukola in Venla or Jukola Relay. It's not only, not only for the top orienteers, it's, it's for everybody. Yeah, it is. Uh, you have also nice weather usually. So it's uh, um, like really nice weekend here. And yeah. Uh, and here is the information from the first leg. We are getting uh, all the fourth leg. First one is a little bit under seven kilometers. The next one also 6.6, 6.8. Then the shortest one, the third one, six kilometers. And then the tough last leg, a little bit over eight kilometers. And from this first leg, we are getting information from uh, 2.9 kilometers, which is our first intermediate control, then 4.8 kilometers, and then 5.8 kilometers uh, just before uh, entering the arena area. And it's quite long uh, from the last controls at this was from uh, start to beginning. And here, before we are seeing women at the terrain, we could see a little bit uh, thoughts that Sarina Jenser has uh, before the race uh, first leg runner for Uel Norska. We saw some of the very fast the runners leading the fields uh, on the way to time. What's the background of this team? Uh, we're uh, the four girls living in Bern and they're running for the yeah, for Oa Norska and then last fall we had the idea to um, make a Yukala and Venla project with this club and uh, yeah, we did a lot of trainings this winter together and yeah now we're here and we're really much looking forward to run the relay. <laughs> Does it feel different to run for for a Swiss club than running for a Nordic club? Mm, when you're here, I think it's quite the same because you have to run as good as you can. Uh, but I think it's really nice to to train a lot during in, during the winter together and yeah, to really focus on that one big event together. And I think that's what feels a bit different. Yeah, I think that's what the Nordic runners for Nordic Nordic clubs get every year. So that's that's what you want for for this this time. Yeah, exactly. We don't have this kind of ambitious clubs in Switzerland, so that's why we run for the ambitious Scandinavian clubs. And it's really nice to also have it at home uh, in Switzerland, like during the week. And uh, yeah, that's what we were aiming for. What's your aim? I think t uh, top 10 is our our goal and yeah we will see. <laughs> yeah, I think you have have the potential to go all the way. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Uh, here we heard some thoughts from Sarina Jenser. Uh, she mentioned that uh, the culture is a little bit diffi different than 
in, in Switzerland than it's here in the northern countries. Jan, you have been running many years now for Kalevan Rasti also. How do you say it about the uh, culture in the Finnish clubs or then for your home clubs in Czech Republic? Yeah, it's uh, much different because for you it's Yukola, surely. I remember we have spent some evenings with the uh, old Yukola results, for example, and we were guessing the performances who someone made like okay. five or ten years ago and we were speaking a lot about Yukola and we don't have this in uh, Central Europe we don't have such a big event or we have some relays run but not so big as uh, Theo Mila and Yukola but as I spent some time in here it feels like uh, I'm training with the guys from here from Finland and we are in quite a good touch so I'm happy and I, I'm happy that I step into this. Yes, that's true. Uh, yesterday, when we were watching uh, images from uh, Joensu and Erin, we were laughing that uh, when you come here, you cannot do anything else that orienteering because there is only woods and woods and woods. Yeah, it was an uh, easy, easy choice. <laughs> easy choice to start here in Eno and Joensu. But, uh, here, uh, uh, they are now heading towards the first control. As I said, we get the first intermediate uh, information from 2.9 kilometers. And we have been going through here uh, our favorites. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's all, always so, so interesting. And also, we are eager to wait. Are they managing well? Is there coming big, big mistakes? Uh, this terrain, it is demanding and the possibility for the big mistakes is there. Yeah, when we see the course length, I think uh, it's quite a short course for women. It means it's nearly middle distance style, a little bit longer, but not much. But it's shorter than the long distance, a bit different than we will have in the men's race, where all the courses are a bit longer, nearly like a long distance. So. And uh, as everyone knows, there is this big hill just uh, behind the competition center. So I guess we can expect the girls will go there straight. So it's also some after this long running with the asphalt, they have to straight maybe start the, to climb up the hill. So let's see how they will manage. Yes, and the first intermediate control is called Harpatin Rinne, slope of Harpati Hill. They are on the other side of the big, big hill, and the total climb is quite a lot for women also during these first legs. Um, and we are expecting them to be there approximately in 20 minutes, and they have been now running for 11 minutes uh, this first leg. Uh, if you have to pick up now the favorite number one for you, which is if you have, we put the pay money here on the table, on which team you put your money on? I would uh, put it on Tamper and Pirinto. Okay, Maybe I ha I ha have taken your choice. I, no, you you didn't take <laughs> my choice. I have three teams there on my paper, uh, but I'm uh, putting my money on Alftaus. Okay. I was the uh, same uh, as uh, Mikaela Maggi said here earlier, but uh, if it's uh, it maybe it's a, first, a tough tough team, Kalina Vinogradova running first, like then Josefine Heikka nowadays, uh, also living quite a lot here in Finland, and Sara Eskilsson and Natalia Gemberle. They were close at Team Mila. maybe it's their times, uh, and it would be nice to have a new team at the top, uh, but uh, also Tampere Purinta is one of the, my fa favorites. Yeah, I think after also I have a really strong uh, last leg runner. Even Natalia was doing a mistake in the Teomila. Uh, in overall, her race was uh, nearly perfect, but it was just this uh, control attacking in the end, uh, where you are under the big pressure, of course, and she can learn from it. So I guess she will do better this now. And uh, you have seen our studio here, and we are in the uh, elementary school of Eno, here in our studio, built up here in the corridor of this school. On the other side of the fence here, there are media centers and uh, so on. But here, then when we turn the camera around, uh, 
our screens here, you can see the beautiful, beautiful uh, sunny weather which we are having here. Here is the finish and then the final straight uh, is just behind uh, and here uh, upon a small hill from there we wait then athletes to arrive and quite a lot uh, uh, is there already people waiting for uh, their runners to come here to the competition center and area. And uh, it's uh, as we see here from our GPS, we are not telling you everything yet, but uh, it is demanding. Yeah, it seems some of the favorite teams are doing mistakes on already in the beginning. So let's wait the first TV control and uh, check how big the mistakes are. That's true. Uh, they are now on the other side of uh, Harpati Hill, uh, heading towards our TV controls. Uh, and uh, as uh, the course setters said uh, earlier this uh, week and also yesterday, so it's going to be demanding demanding race for women women have been now running for 15 minutes and uh, they are quite in the schedule uh, they are waiting to be there in 20 minutes uh, at the first intermediate control at uh, 2.9 kilometers uh, and of course Remember the social media, use hashtag Yukola Live, hashtag Yukola 2017 and uh, give us uh, some tips uh, of your favorites or and so uh, during the race uh, using Twitter or uh, then showing your home studios in Instagram and follow also Yukola there, hashtag Yukola 2017 is then used uh, in social media. Social media is nowadays one of the main information routes uh, also among the orienteers. Uh, there are many maps and then uh, feelings uh, shown by that way also. I remember here this spring when I was announcing the World Cup races and there before the sprint relay there was the really young kids uh, sprint which has a small, small map, and I ask organizers that can I put this map on uh, uh, Instagram? Of course you can put it. Our Finnish national team told that, that they were immediately checking out how the finishing area is looking from that small, small map which uh, kids under 10 years were using, so you have to be very careful which we are <laughs> showing in the social media. Yeah, of course, all the teams are trying to get all the information which are released. So I guess uh, we, now we are like browsing the internet. I remember always when we were running uh, Yukola. Uh, we are not running this year, but the year before, we were always watching the women's race and uh, checking uh, all the comments and things like that. And of course, uh, checking the GPS uh, tracking and trying to get a view how the women's race go goes. and. Uh, trying to learn something for our race from it. And get as much as possible the information. From this area there is an old map from 2008, so I believe every top team has that map and they know a little bit and they have planned when they know where the start place is and where the competition center is. They can plan a little bit the courses and try to catch up. And of course now when the women are running they are getting information about the terrain, what kind of type is it hmm. at the different parts of the terrain. Uh, it is mentioned that it's quite green on a map, uh, but the course setters tell that, that they have the choice to make. Did they want it to have the green or then the green stripes? And they choose it to be green because they don't want uh, all the trees laying down on the ground. They want them to be upwards. And uh, here at the Competition center overall, we are waiting uh, totally overall uh, 30,000 to come here.
to watch and follow this uh, orienteers uh, Christmas and New Year and every other top top uh, celebration moment uh, here in Yukola you see your see your friends from own and other countries and uh, only a couple of uh, minutes maybe seconds and we are waiting the first athletes at the first intermediate to control at 2.9 kilometers yeah. and one GPS as we are also looking there is Pummit Kundon, there is Mari Laukkanen, Finnish biathlon athlete running also this first leg and now we are at 2.9 kilometers other side of Harpatti and it looks good yeah, it's, is uh, it this good in ev everywhere? <laughs> I, I was running today morning and I have really enjoyed it. But of course the top team athletes, they are running with the full speed. They cannot enjoy so much the forest, but it was nice. And there is the first teams uh, arriving and which is the number to come there. They have now used as expected a little bit under 20 minutes. Uh, They are doing mistakes. There he saw first runner close to control. And now it's saying that Alfta Ösa and Galina Vinokradova is punching there, but we didn't see her. Yeah. She was fast. There comes another one. Is according to the, the GPS. That is uh, Vargas Iep and Yvonne Gunel in the lead. And now Vinogradova, they're on the second place. Uh, yes. There, yes. Paimio uh, Rastin, Nina Temjakova, Uko Tiisaren, Paran Kristiansan, Uko Kore, Keurun Kisale ja Sari Antonen, as I said, Baila Mama, Lisa Antila. She is for an... Uh, as the Finnish national team runner, then Tampereen Pyrny, the second team, Plaxi, Rensbeko, Iko Hakaspoka, second team, Possum, Angelim Nankuri, which is missing Emily Kemp this year. He has, she has problems with her leg. And then Nui Hiden Kierteet and Uko Orion. Then comes Lahden Suunisteet, Lotta Kirvesmies, which has Minna Kalpi on the last leg. Jotevor Majona, there, Muengmark, 39 seconds, Lynx, Jarrat, second team, Majona, second team, Espon Sunta, Linné, Muras, Murveste, during the fourth team, Mael Bavir running there, Tullinge, Sara, increased 52 seconds, Iepo Jotevor on the 36th place, one minute behind is Ingrid Mure. Uel Norska there on 38th place, Sarina Jenser, one minute, two seconds, these are also interesting team from Lithuania. Irina Nuberi st starting their race uh, and 43rd place, uh, 1 minute 12 seconds behind. And now we know that Kove and Tampere and Pyrinto had made some mistakes uh, from the top teams. Yeah, we haven't seen Kove, Halden, no. Pohian Taktik. And now already almost two minutes since they were the leading. Are we waiting? There comes Amas Parma. Stura Tuna is there also. Uh, and Stura Tuna, Anna Morcel, almost two minutes behind uh, after two kilometers. Vasan uh, Sunistajat, there is Anu Tuomista, a young, young runner. And Farum Tiswilde, and Farum Tiswilde, look their competition number. They have started yeah. quite behind in that uh, club. But Agnes Krasht uh, has started well. Mm -hmm. But now we wait for uh, Tampereen Pyrintö, Asko Pohjan Tähti, KV, Lidingö, Domnarvets uh, is now Jessica Tully, 2 minutes 36 seconds behind. Yeah, Domnarvets have a completely different team, I think, this year. Uh, it's not running anymore Dana Shafka, Brushkova, but let's see. 
There was Jens Harretti they got to Marit Maria Randa in running for the last leg for them. And there is Halden. Joe Jefford, exactly three minutes behind number one there, punching in this at this control, but still there is Vekala, the number one second team, Vekala get Jutebor, third team, Ikaliste Nosova Voima, Kollerud. And there is Pohjanta, together with leading uh, Biesmo and Hataja. And cap is 3 minutes 17 seconds, 15 and 17 seconds. Wide. Big mistakes here in the beginning. And we're waiting still. Kove and Lotta Karhola. She, we saw on our GPS a big mistake from her. There was Södertelje and now Kove. Johanna Hulkonen, 3 minutes 45 seconds behind leading. But where is Tampere? Uh, it seems you have a better guess in the beginning, uh, at least. Alden, second team, Lillumarka, they are 4 minutes behind. Turin the third and fifth team there, Paimir at the second team. And here you see there is one Kangasala as a goal runner and some others also checking that this is this is not our control. And there, there is now Tampere and Turin and there are four and a half minutes behind. And it doesn't look so good for Lotta Karl at the moment when she is heading towards the next control. And here, of course, when you are quite a lot behind the top teams, your pace, it's difficult to keep top, top pace when you have slower, slower runners ahead of you. It depends. If you are physically well prepared, I think you can use the other runners so you don't have to read the map so much and you can follow the backs of the runners before you and try to catch them. But if you are physically not so well, uh, then it's really difficult to pass the, the train in because everyone is using the same road, especially in the beginning when there are not so many paths in the forest. Now a little bit over five minutes since uh, first team and Barkas EF punch it on this control, Uko Ravine and uh, their uh, 520 behind and then a small number, EF core leading uh, Matlena Bustrem already five and a half minutes behind. But it was a second team. Yeah, it was second team, yeah. But they have had two tough teams quite many times. Uh. I think they have even three teams in the top 20 from last year, yeah. if I remember well. So, uh, situation here was so that uh, Barkas EF and Yvonne Gunnell uh, was in the lead. Uh, and was, I saw Yvonne uh, here early when she was heading towards the start and asked her that would you like to come to interview? No, take some younger, she said. <laughs> now she's showing the others that <laughs> she is in the lead together with Kalina Vinogradova. Paimio Rasti starting well. Tisaren, Pan Christian Sart, Kore, Keurun Kisailat, Baila Mama. This is uh, old national team runners from Finland. Then Purinto second team, Lotta Eerola and Black Sea Oak orienteering Anastasia Burogova mm -hmm. from Russia. And then if we look, there was uh, 10 best ten teams in 10, 12 seconds. Then comes Rens, BK, Iko Hakkar, Pukan, Fossum, Angelniemi, and they are new Hidenkirtet, Orion, Lahden Suunistajat, Göteborg, Majon, UK, and Lynx on the 20th place, 46 seconds. And we have among one minute uh, Göteborg, EFK Göteborg first team, Ingrid Mure on a 36th place at 2.9 kilometers. And the next one comes from 4.8 kilometers. And here we see the big, big group of runners now here at this control. We should have up there also Mari Laukkanen, the biathlon runner from also punching there, he has also the GPS uh, when she was there a moment ago. But as you can see, there is many, many runners now in the forest. And it's totally different to run there in a group than alone in the 
I guess so. you can ask uh, Mari because she is the, your next guest. So when she will come, you can ask her how was it. To... <laughs> how was it? This? And this is also her first Yukola and Venla relay ever. She has said that she hasn't been orienteering so much since school orienteering, but now enjoying the Yukola atmosphere here in her home village. Enno, he comes here, and last winter she break through. And here uh, now this uh, mistake that Tampere is and taking the control. Also, EF Goyer just passing by there. Yeah, it's a really difficult control in the green area. So the visibility is really low, and we can see the Pirinto didn't have a proper plan how to attack the control. So that was the result was this mistake. And that was al almost two minutes mistakes, and the gap was uh, quite a lot here. It was just giving, beginning to uh, be longer and longer at uh, here the first intermediate control uh, when we look to small numbers. Uh, Amas Sturatuna was on the 47th place, uh, Anna Morsell, a little bit under two minutes behind Vargas, and that's not uh, much in this terrain. Yeah, I guess uh, no one expects that Anna Marcel will uh, be in the top 10, but uh, she will do a stable run, so I think she is doing her job. Well, Norska and Sarina Jenscher starting well. Uh, she was one minute behind at this moment. Uh, Dom Narvet, Jessica Tully on the 53rd place, but the uh, position isn't uh, now the thing we are looking, we are checking the gap to the leading and it was two and a half minutes from Dom Narvets. And Halden, Joe Shepard, but Halden, Halden's team is not our favorite this year. No, we, we didn't speak much about them, but it's uh, because uh, on the second leg is Eva Yuzhenkova, she's already the coach, even before she was a really strong runner, especially in the relays. And then we have Holior and Elena Ross. I think it was only Holior who was running last year. Uh, the rest, uh, they changed uh, all the other runners. So they are not in the top favorites, but I think still they can do top 10 result easily. That's true. And then the top 10 teams, EFK leading uh, Suko and Emma Yesmu. Uh, was uh, 3 minutes 15 seconds behind. She was there together with Anna Hataya from Asko Pohjan Tähti. That 3 minutes 15 seconds behind, leading Vargas, EF and Kove. Johanna Hulkonen made a small mistakes also there earlier. 3 minutes 45 seconds behind leading teams. And uh, then the cap. To Tampere and Purinto, it was four and a half minutes. And there is a lot to do for Lotta Karhora on this leg. And then, of course, Anima ja Finke, Saila King, and then Hanju on the next ones. Is it too much already? No, I think uh, if you lose so early in the beginning, there is a long time that you can catch it back. And I think uh, it's still a long way to go to the finish. So. We will see how big gap it will be in the end. If she will recover well and uh, catch back some seconds uh, or minutes, I think they can still do a good result. And it doesn't take so many minutes uh, until we have women at the second intermediate place, which is 4.8 kilometers. We are expecting them uh, to be there. And here is uh, Jodemar Mayonas' uh, mistake. She is totally lost now. Now finding maybe. Uh, yeah, it was a parallel mistake. I think she yeah. thought she is in the slope where the control is, uh, but she was not. So it cost her some minutes. That cost. Uh, Mua Engmark uh, minutes there uh, on that. Uh, and now we are at 4.8 kilometers on our second intermediate control. Uh, expected time to be there was 33 minutes. Uh, 
and soon they have used it. Uh, and now we wait and see what's the situation here. Is it still Vargas EF and uh, Yvonne Gunnell in the lead? Kalina Vinogradova, Natalia Nina Temjakova, Lilian Forsgren, Nicole Jungdal, Emma von Krusenstjärna, Sari Antonen were the top seven at uh, first intermediate control. And now, like in Yukola, you just whisper and wait for the first runners to arrive. There, it's uh, still, still all alone, this control. Yeah. And according to the GPS, it might still take about one minute. The first runners were alive. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Hepokallio is this called, and here you can see also from the map and GPS. Uh, and then uh, there the teams are coming. If we look here, the teams pick up someone and our lottery, who is there first? I would guess Lillian Forsgren. Uh, uh, my favorite for the first leg has been all the time Sari Antonen from Keurun Kisaliat. We'll see if she is there first. But at least the GPS we can see up in the window is not going straight towards the control. Yes, so. and there is many, many teams also without GPS, so... Yeah. But as we have seen in the previous control, after I was missing in the in the control attacking, because she was there first, but uh, she was punching second in yeah. the end and missed there over 20 seconds, I would say. But there comes the first runs. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six teams heading, and <laughs> it's after Ursa. And Kalina Vinogradova, Sari Antonen, Keurun Kisailijat, Paimir Rastinina, Temjakova, Nicole Jungdal, Pan Christian Sand, and Vargas Iev, Yvonne Gunnell. These five teams are together. And now it's interesting to see what is the gap behind the others. And when we look at the favorite teams, it looks very good for Alfta Ösa. Mm, it seems you were right in the beginning. <laughs> but still a wrong way to go, wrong way to go. This is... A little bit over halfway, two of two out, two part of three run, and then Tisaren, Lilian Forsgren, you mentioned her, and uh, it looks good. Angelin Lankuri, Heini Sarmiki, Uel Norska, Sarina Jenser, only 47 seconds, Iktisa, Irina Nyberg, Charlotte Chalet for Ukorian and Tulling, Sofia Lundqvist, punching their 57 seconds behind, and leading after Ösa. Things Jarla, Krista Neumann, Annika Rihma for Eden Kiertejat. 13 teams, uh, and it's been now a little bit over one minute uh, since the first teams punch it there. Mua Engmark, IFK Göteborg Majorna. She was uh, at that place. Uh, under one minute and uh, now we're waiting for her, for example. There are now Rastakarvo, uh, Tämäs Parma, Antea Nui, New Dalens, Hisirasti, Stuida Tuna, two minutes now, Anna Morsell. There in this group, followed by Lynx, second team, Aino Mainkärla. But now again. Göteborg, Lin Linne, not there yet. Now comes Göteborg, Majorna's second team, together with Lynx and Vaasan Suunas. They're two and a half minutes behind leading teams. Upo Orion, second team. Myrra Halsson. Asko Pohjan tähti Anna Hajata. 2 minutes 40 seconds uh, was the gap there. 
when it was uh, earlier, 3 minutes 17 seconds, so Hata has uh, now gained, gained the top teams here. Uh, there also Linne tries to after her 240, Lahden Suns at KV, IFK Göteborg, Ingrid Müre, Ingrid Müre, almost three minutes behind there together with Jamsa Retkevek at Pekkelaget, second team. There are also Farun Tietve, Ugo Raspori, Ugo Trian, IFK Muras, Asko Pohjens second team, and Dom Narvets now, Jessica Tully, three, three minutes, 13 seconds behind leading after Ösa. Pohjantähti. Hata has found the, now the pace. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, really good that she start to catch some time, but it seems, uh, for example, Pirinto, which we were talking about, they they were losing about five, was it minutes? And we it can was uh, four minutes thirty seconds the cap. So there is still some time. Uh, now it's been four minutes, 13 seconds when Göteborg Majorna, Mua Engmark bunch there. And there we can see runners. Uh, here it looks uh, quite good runnability in this uh, terrain. Yeah, the runnability is fine, but uh, as you can see, the visibility is not re really perfect. Uh, and you can you have to avoid the trees, those small trees, as you can see. So it's really difficult to stay in the direction. Fortunately, here it's usually some slope. Even now, it looks they are running in the flat area. So, but as I told in the beginning, uh, they are all using about the same track through the forest because uh, those are the top athletes, and they usually select the best way where to run and uh, here are the top teams there is Lilian Fortren Nina Temjakova from Paimio Rasti in this group uh, and uh, we have now KV at uh, 4.8 kilometers KV Johanna Hulkonen 4 minutes 36 seconds Halden 4 minutes 47 seconds but not yet Paimio Tampere Pyrinto there It's been over five and a half minutes. It looks now really bad for Tampere. And it doesn't take many minutes when we have first teams here uh, at our third intermediate control uh, at 5.8 kilometers. So it's uh, just before the end, so I guess there we can see how big gaps there will be between the teams. And afterwards it will be just about the final positions, because it's this long run in into the arena. That's true, it's not much to orient only one control after this one. Beside the graveyard, here at the uh, Evo Center. So as you were asking me before, so who is the, this team who is approaching the control, the first one? I believe there is this group of Alfta Ösa, Keurunki, Saad, Paimion Rasti, Pan Christian, San Pargas, IF, and uh, it's Vinogradova O Antonen. They're in the lead, and it's Vinogradova. Yeah, it's... Alftoja Sauko, Galina Vinogradova there, and Sari Antonen, Keurun Kisailijat, next team to arrive on a second place, and they are now a little bit ahead of the others. What does that mean, this mean when uh, these teams go out, and that means that uh, Josefin Heikka for Alftoja will be alone in the lead? Yeah, so... It will be, but then she can use her time and just uh, try to read the map properly. She's not in a hurry, she don't have to catch anything. 
and just do a secure orienteering, I think, from the beginning. And uh, when the others will catch her, then she could like just stay with them, or she can try to do their, her own race through all the course. And no other teams yet. Uh, already one minute since uh, Galina Vinokrarova punched it, and then there comes this second group uh, where we have Lilian Forsgren from UK Tisaren, Van Christian Sande, Nicole Jungdal, Irina Nyberg, Ik Tisan, and Van Kurheini Saarimäki, Jaro Orientering, and Emma Klingeberg. Teams we waited there also in the beginning. So we could say that no surprises, but still surprises because of the big mistakes big, big, made by Tampereen Pyrintö KV. Yeah, we have lost some of the favorites, but and the gaps are quite big between the teams. It seems we will have uh, like few groups starting to the second leg, and uh, I try to find out uh, the situation that Tampereen Purinto. Yeah. At their but we earlier. have them on the last control already, so... They are heading here, yes. And it's Galina Vinogradova. She's physically really strong runner, so this end is... Lotta Karhola at uh, 4.8 kilometers, already 6.49 behind leading teams. When uh, here they come first, uh, Galina Vinogradova from Alfta Ösa UK, first women here at the competition center, and soon we can see her running here with our own eyes uh, at the competition center, which is here in the middle of Evo, you know. And the cap to Keurun uh, Kisalite Sari Antonin is maybe 15 and 20 seconds, so very strong first leg from Kalina Vinogradova. And this is this is quite long this last mm. leg. for example if we think about the women's last leg you still have to have strength for this last 500 meters yeah I guess uh, it's not going to be decided as on the Teomila but it's about this run in but now she ha ha we have her here we have her she is here now punching as a first team uh, at the finish uh, 45 minutes 38 seconds uh, it was counting that maybe 44 minutes uh, will be the time uh, best time on this uh, first leg we used 45 38 and then comes uh, Sari Antonen from Keurun Kisaliat uh, as the second here And uh, for Keurun Kisalet, Sonja Mörsk, ski orienteer, going out for the next uh, second leg. Cap was 26 seconds, so very strong from Kalina Vinogradova this last hundreds of meters. And then come Lilian Forsgren for Tisaren, next team here and the cap will be a little bit over one minute when Lilian is here. Then behind Lilian comes Pan Christian Sand, Iktisa there first, Jarla, Emma Klingenberg, and uh, for Pan Christian Sand, Nicole Jungdal, and for uh, Angel Mnankuri, Heini Saarimäki, the first leg, and they are going now out for, for Tisaren, Elinor Eriksson, Pan Christian Sand, uh, Starred uh, Nelly Clarkson, Ik Disa, Vesta Ambreitzaite, Angeli Menankuri, Sanna Kaupila, and for Jarla, Sara Schöckvist, going out for, to the next second leg, which is uh, equal with the first one with the length. Interesting to see what will happen. But still, the cap from uh, 
after this, this so called turf group was over one minute. And then uh, the next teams to arrive uh, are then Hiden Kiertajat, Annika Rihma, Kamins and Jenny Patana to the second leg, and then Uel Norska. Two minutes, 20 seconds is the gap from Sarina Jensen, now Silje E. Proljaren, Norwegian, starts this. And many have said that this terrain doesn't shoot at the Swiss orienteers, but uh, Nordic orienteers best. What do you say about that? Uh, it's uh, quite difficult to say, but in overall, when I was running, it feels like uh, maybe half of the terrain was not so soft ground. It was quite a hard ground. There were some possibilities to use the roads. And uh, uh, it's nowadays it's really difficult to say that some terrain doesn't fit for Swiss because the Swiss are doing really good results in the orienteering. But of course, uh, the Scandinavian runners might have an advantage because they grow up in this kind of the terrain. That's true. And Parka uh, CF Ivana Gunnell on the 10th place. There is Frida Lundberg, young orienteer on the next leg. Then Stura Tuna, Anna Morsell, Magdalena Olsson on the second one. And 4.42 was the gap. Rasti Karhut, Suvi Ylikylä changing to Tuja Kuusela. And Lynx, Karolina Sundberg to Sanni Norbakka. These 13 teams have now changed when MS Parma. So they're the new one orienteering on the next one. And there is tough uh, duo on Anastasia Rudnaja and Vendula. Hirchikova starting there, and also we have Koyote Bori Anna Nerhi and Ukoline Rebecca Olsson. There we have an interesting four athletes group, three almost four minutes behind leading Alfta Ösa. Interesting to see if they are catching up. Rudna, Hirchikova, Nerhi, Olsson. Yeah, at least in the beginning, uh, there is this long, long way to the starting point, and uh, you can keep a piece pace of uh, some other runner and uh, it might help uh, you to start well for competition. And now we have 28 teams, Lahden Suunista, Lotta Kirvesniems and uh, Jenga Vinci for the next leg. Then comes Rasti Kurikaisko point the second team. Göteborg Majona Uko, first team, Mua Engmark, uh, now 4 minutes 51 seconds behind Victoria Enbson. Both the GMO course teams there together. Good start from Jolanta Koloshnikska and Runa Fremsta going out for the second leg. And then uh, we know that the gap was quite a lot to, to chasing teams. Uh, Turinto has punched their on the pre-warning, eight minutes behind. And EFK leading also seven minutes. Emma Besmo behind leading. Pohjan Tähti now six minutes. So Haataja has made mistakes. So has Kove and Johanna Hulkonen. Halden changing here. But is it, uh, there is a change in the running order of Pohjan Tähti? Heidi Venman, yes. Uh, now she was not in the start list, at least uh, when we were. Martina Joensu was here on the second leg. There's something happened, so Heidi Venman now waiting here. Halden uh, changing. They were uh, five and a half minutes behind, and now Eva Jurenikova going out for the next leg. And here to our studio, I get some company at the moment. And here in the studio, I have Galina Vinogradova from Alfta Ösa. Congratulations, what a race. Thank you. Uh, you were in the lead almost from beginning. How was it at Harpatti? Uh, for me, it was... Uh, uh, easy, easy. I'm feeling easy today, me, but uh, 
Yesterday on team meeting say it will be technical distance, more technical than Euclid before. Yes, and I am. My task was uh, read uh, map every time and don't, I tried not to lose in the map and yes, I made my task. I'm happy. Uh, you were strong also physically here. We did notice that here in the end you were together with Keuru Kisalit and Sari Antonin and you just uh, flew away from her and the cap was almost 30 seconds. So also physically it has been a good day for you. Uh, yes, but my shape now is not the best because how you know it's uh, after two weeks it will be World Championship. Yeah. And of course I'm preparing for World Championship, but in the UCLA it's an uh, important competition for me, for, for our club. And of course I made some preparation for this. And before Yukola, I'm afraid but, but I will be not in uh, good shape. But when I run with other girl from some strong uh, club, and I understand, I run quite good. That's true, and it was amazing. And also, you, your team is one of the favorites for this relay. It was very close at Tiumila. Yeah. Uh, so, main aim for you, is it to be number one today? Uh, we hope and we see and we will believe. We hope that. Thank you very much. And now uh, to warm down and then good luck for the World Championships in Estonia. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for organization. <laughs> thank you. Wonderful, wonderful from, uh, news from uh, Galina Vinogradova. First at the chains, this sec first leg and now uh, At the change, we have now Pohjan uh, Tähti has been chasing Anna Hatia six minutes 44 seconds behind, Kove almost seven minutes behind, Halden we mentioned already. Then we go forward to list IFK leading SUK, Emma Piesmu was here on 67th place, seven minutes 45. 54 seconds, sorry, 54 seconds behind. Also Pan who's there, but Pan who's doesn't have the best team because the all uh, national team runners are not here. IFK leading a second team, eight and a half minutes behind IFK. And then uh, Freydi Kespeko from Norway, 25th last year, and now nine minutes behind leading after Esa. Tampereen Pyrintö, 9 minutes 20 seconds behind leading. So there is l a lot to do for uh, Finke, Kinni and Harju. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's too much. I, we cannot say yet it's too much, but it's really much. It's really much. Also, Uko Ravinen uh, was almost 10 minutes uh, behind leading. Alfta Ösa from the top teams and here situation at the first changeover after Ösa Kuruki Saliat in the lead. Stura Tuna, mm. we know Tuve on the last leg, 2 minutes 42 seconds behind. I think uh, Anna Marcel just did good uh, the job they were expecting from her. That's true and they have now Magdalena Olsson there. On the next leg, here we have Jan Sapaimio, Pailmama Järla, Uko Trian, Tullingi, Orion, Lades, Unistajat, and so on. Here are Mo Majonas, both teams, a little bit of five minutes behind. And then uh, top 50 teams. Uh, here is Halden on the 44th place at your moment. And from the second leg, uh, here you can see the beginning for the first and second leg and the first at the first control did the uh, uh, many teams already mistakes yeah we have seen the mistake from Tamper and Perinto and uh, now let's see what is happening uh, with the other teams uh, those two controls are both really difficult because you have to cross the green before the control and it seems Alfta also make it pretty well. But now, as you can see, Jarla and Tisser, and they just step into the green and suddenly they are not sure about the position. They didn't choose uh, 
uh, any bi you, it's really difficult to choose some big feature where you can attack the control from. Maybe Storatuna is doing better going from down if they have this northern control. But the airline this are and they are just running between, so I don't know which option they have. And did you see the, what Olska and uh, Hiden Kiertat made the uh, route choice with the pass uh, from the south side, uh, just using and change, saving energy on that route choice uh, there uh, for uh, Uel Nurska. It uh, is uh, Silje Groljaren on the second leg here. When we have now totally 140 teams at the first change, Domnarvets, uh, GUF uh, punching there, Jessica Tully almost 12 and a half minutes behind yeah. leading. This uh, route choice from Oil Norska was really good because she was following this water ditch and uh, it was its a line object or feature so it's really nice to follow and then she came to this crossing and she can easily attack the control but now we can see the big mistake from Tisar and the Arla uh, the question is which control they are searching for we don't know that's true we don't know exactly if they are on the northern or a southern part control heading there Check out the double papers here. It looks to be that uh, Tisare now knowing where to go. Yarla on the other way, heading totally on a different direction. Uh, Sara Schöckvist uh, there. And for Yarla, it looks to be that it's the southern, mm. the small hill there, which we have now. Angel Mankuri just heading towards an EFK. Yeah, the body passing there. But Think even not, not seeing the control. Wind. Although there has been now over a thousand women running already, there are small paths going the, uh, certainly up for uh, everywhere. I guess moment. there will be a small path between the controls because there will be many runners who came to the wrong one. Yes. And even Storatuna, it looks like all the time she, they are going to the northern one, but now she is coming to the southern control. So it's, as I said in the beginning, it's really difficult forking already in the beginning of the course, because uh, you have to cross the green always when you are attacking. And it's not so easy to choose a good feature where you, uh, from which you can attack the control. That is true, and now we see situation of Wolnorska, Tisaren, Hiden, Kierta, Tangin, Nankuri, and now also Jarla and Göteborg heading towards the next control, which we saw already. Alfta Ösa, Lin, and Josefin Heikka. Yeah, when we mentioned the, the lead. corsetters in the beginning, it's uh, Simo Martoma and Petri Vainio, and they were doing. Uh, some work also before the World Champs 2013, I remember they were corsetting the selection races and they are really working with the terrain. I remember there was some route choice where you can see far away the control but because there was some clearing, but if you not uh, watch uh, in front of you, it was really difficult to read all the details. But there was, for example, one hill just close to the control, which you can select easily. And now also here, unofficial situation by GPS after saying the lead, Uel Norska there, 1 minute 56 seconds behind when it was here, 2 minute, almost 2 and a half, 2.20 at the change, so for Uel Norska and Silje Krojaren, has, it has been a good start, Tisaren Hidenkierte at there, they would, Tis Hidenkierte would under Three minutes behind leading of Toyosa and now Angel Minakuri 317 behind there at the second control. Yeah, but we can see Storatuna was really having this northern control. Now they are back there. So it was a big mistake from it, it was a big mistake for Magdalena Olson and uh, Storatuna was here at two minutes forty-two seconds behind Alf Toyosa at the change and now it's been over four minutes and you can see it's still 
a small way to go. So uh, actually quite a big hill to go. Yeah. So uh, this is demanding, as said, and at the moment we have a little bit over one, over 200 teams change here from the first leg. And also, when I check here, the GPS also, Mari Laukonen has made it, so very well done from the biathlon athlete she will come here to join me for the third leg of this women's relay and then Simo Martona, Martoma from, from the course setters will be also here commentating the Venla relay for the last leg KV Lynx Pohjan Tähti there now And the cap from Ove and Ove and Tati. It was uh, almost six and a half minutes, uh, almost seven minutes at the change. Where we are now at 2.8 kilometers. First intermediately control of this uh, second leg. Is it still? or we know that it's after Elsa in the lead but now it's interesting to see what will be the cap for the chasing groups and Ulanushka and Sarina Jenser there she should be now and there there is uh, Josefine Heikka former Engström punching there yeah, and as I say at the beginning, she's using the opportunity that she has some gap and she's uh, doing a really good orienteering as you can see from a GPS. She can take her time and uh, and she is doing running without the mis obvious mistakes nowadays. So she keeps uh, she keeps the time advantage she get in the in the finish. So really good job from her, I would say. And here is uh, some first leg runners uh, at this control. And not yet uh, other teams uh, heading there. Uh, we're waiting for uh, Tisaren, Uelnorska, Iktisa maybe. And clock is ticking, clock is ticking, and it's clicking for Alftaiosa. Elinor Eriksson from Tisaren started 1 minute 13 seconds behind Josefine Heikka to this leg, and now it's been over one and a half minutes. And the forest is silent. There are some. Some runners coming, but they are from the first, first leg. Yeah, first leg runners, yes. Maybe we continue the whispering during tonight. Yeah, it will be a long night, <laughs> but now <laughs> <laughs> it will be a long night. And when we look for the women's race and expecting for the men's Yukola, it's be it's going to be very demanding and a tough. Yeah, but and everything is possible. Yeah, but as we are so much on the north, the night is not going to be so dark, so that's the only advantage, but still I think the terrain is difficult even in the daylight. But the gap is bigger and bigger, I would say, because it's bigger, yeah. we are not getting any other teams. But according to the GPS, we should get uh, soon another team. They should be soon there. But as you can see, it's three minutes already since uh, Josefine Heikka was here at uh, 
Yeah, but we are waiting Swiss for a control. Swiss team on the second place. <laughs> well, Norska, that was one of the favorites. And there. Is it? it looks to be, yes. Yeah. Uh, red with orange colors. And Silja Egrol Jaren there as a second team. Three minutes, two seconds behind Alfa Ösa. We have the discussion in the beginning that uh, always it's a Scandinavian club, but now it's uh, suddenly the club from Central Europe. Yeah, and then still Keurun Kisaliat, uh, Sonja Mörsk, a very good start from Sonja and Hiden Kiertäjät, Jenny Patana, and they are together, third and fourth, and then comes next one that is Tisaren, Elinor Eriksson for Tisaren and they are now Söderberje, Vendula Horchikova, Horchikova. 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 It's good to teach me how to pronounce this, check his name when there is so many times, so many consonants in these names. Iktisa and Rafikaru first there, Tuja Kuusala, Vesta Ambrajaite for Iktisa. And uh, Iktisa is a Lithuanian team which has gathered also the top Lithuanian teams. Yeah, but now I think there are even some Irina Nieberg, she is uh, Russian, yeah, so yeah. they are getting... They are for quite many years already running well in the men's, also in the women's class, so it's nice to see some other flag in the result list. Vargas IF, Frida Lönnberg, they have... Uh, they had uh, experience starter and then young, young runners, uh, Frida Lundberg, Ida Marie, Sederberg and Ami Nymalm. They're in that team and that's a future team, we would say. But as you can see, it's uh, nine teams and nearly five, ten teams is already five minutes behind. So it means there will be a big gaps in, uh, in the race in overall. Yes. Overall, so there is now. Kore, Iko Hakas, Poikran, second team, and Pahimio Rasti now on the 12th place, 5 minutes, 8 seconds behind, leading Alsta Ösa. Angel Nankuri and Sanna Kauppila there. And she's going totally on a different direction from oh this yeah. control. That's strange. Uh, I know the reason, but I'm still silent. New Dalens, uh, Fossum, Asko Pohjan Tähti now, Heini Venman, 5 minutes 47 seconds on the 16th place. Uh, she has gained up 40 positions. Jötebori, Anna Närhi, Yeko Muras, Olha Pachenko, Mervi Pesu for Bailamana, Jötebomajan second team, Runa Helmstad, Ingrid Gulbrandsen, and their new. So there is now Pohjan Tähti at Jötebori, two Finns, Venman, Närhi going together. And Venman has started very well. He has, she has been fastest so far, almost 50 seconds faster than the next one. Horichikova, Horichikova from Södertälje. So a great start from Pohjantähti. Yeah, we can see here is a big group of the runners, and I guess they are they will, they are helping each other to keep a good pace. And yeah, it's uh, they are climbing. Back into the race for him, back to. And now Stura Tuna, we saw the mistake. Magdalena also made, and the gap is now 6 minutes 40 seconds. But as we saw, Pohjan Tähti gaining up, and the differences are getting bigger, but still uh, the difference to the top, we can all very, or almost ask now, is it too much? But to the top 5, to top 10, it's still possible to gain climb up here from these positions. Uh, Lynx now on a 32nd place, seven minutes behind, and then comes Amas Parma's second team, Katja Mjösund. Katja, who is coming also here to the studio during the Jukola relay. She has been working as a uh, doctor for the Finnish national team and knows uh, quite a lot about this uh, terrain. And also and now Katja there on a second leg for Amas Parma's second team. And now also interesting to follow what will be the cap from uh, Anima Yafinke. It was over eight minutes here. 
at the change. The comes Vasan Suunistajat, Satu Tuomisto, also young runner KV, Karolina Ukskoski. Punching there, and KV is now on the 37th place, eight minutes behind. There are Parma, Linne, Halden, Lahden Suunistajat, Hiisi Rasti in that group, eight minutes behind. And then comes Rens Bego and Farum Tiswilde. Lea Reine for Farum. Lea was running also in last week World Military Championships in Hamina. And she asked me yesterday at uh, House to Terrain here. It was her first time in Finland uh, running. Oh, yes, yeah, she has been and she was enjoying the terrain in Hamina. And she asked me, how was it? I said to her that. Uh, uh, when with just very good runnability in Hamina, I said to her that uh, yesterday you were running in heaven, tomorrow in hell. <laughs> but it's not hell. It's uh, I was meaning that by that that it was easy orienteering, and now it's demanding orienteering. Yeah, but it's I think still uh, the courses are going through the areas which are quite runnable at least. Now what do we see? Uh, it's uh, nice. Tulling there, Rebecca Hendrik, uh, nine minutes. Uh, there was the EFCO leading uh, Alice Hugosson. Nine minutes, 22 seconds behind. And uh, that is too much for leading. Uh, also. And now we wait for Hürint. Uh, it was, uh, I check out uh, the situation for during the, it was 9 minutes 20 seconds, so it's been now 1 minute more from change to this first intermediate phone call at 2.8 kilometers. And he might have to get running there. Yeah, Josephine was is uh, running pretty well because she is keeping the pace nearly of the best runners. There was uh, just this one faster time with uh, about Haney Wehman with about one minute faster, but otherwise. And now she we have uh, Animaya. Animaya there, ten and a half minutes behind there, and uh, she's been one minute slower than uh, Josefina Heikka in the beginning. And here to Jarla making her mistake. And uh, it's difficult to know where you are when you come here mm. in the slope. Yeah, it's a green and uh, it's really important when you are going in to know where do, where do you go exactly in otherwise uh, it's a big risk that's true and here's the situation at 2.8 kilometers after Uko in the lead followed by Norska Keuru Keurun kisarjat hiiden kertä tiisaren Södertelin yvan orienteering Rastikarutittis Vargas Uko Kore Topsen and then we can pick up there Asko Pohjan Tähti, five and a half minutes, a little bit over behind. And here's Turatuna, 6.41. And also Jarla there, 6.30 six behind, leading Alfta Ös. And next, uh, in the minute control uh, will be then uh, at uh, 4.7 kilometers uh, and we are expecting them to be there after 70 mi minutes of running of this leg uh, 37 minutes so soon in any minutes they should be there first runners of this second leg at uh, 4.7 kilometers. And now we have some picture from Forest. Yes, uh, 
It's Josefine looking back at who is coming there, and it's Timo Mikkola running with the camera. <laughs> yeah, I think she's still having a gap, at least according to the GPS, she should not see and hear anyone. No, only the first leg runners, uh, and this is the same area which we saw also the first leg runners. Uh, but as you can see, the forest is uh, quite runnable in some parts and quite nice. But here it's also though that you have to know exactly where to go. As you saw there, there was first leg runners going in the mm. opposite direction. And knowing that where they are coming from, but <laughs> I'm, know, I'm knowing what I'm doing. I'm going straight ahead to my control. And now here we are at 4.7 kilometers and waiting for Josefine Heikka to come there. And interesting to see how big are the caps after this one. As you said, it's amazing how big they are. But uh, that's because of the demanding terrain of uh, Harpatti here at Eno. Mm. And here is Alfta Ösa and Josefina Heikka all alone, and it looks good. Yeah. They have uh, Sarah Eskilson as a following runner, but so sh it means she have to do also her own job. I don't know her so well. I don't know if you, but uh, oh, for sure she was in Theo Mila team when they were starting uh, pretty well. So, but she's uh, not. Um, I I don't remember her from international competition as I remember Josephine Heika. Uh, that's true, uh, Sara is uh, in the top uh, national ne level uh, orienteros from Sweden and uh, uh, close, close uh, to be in the uh, top, and, but uh, is one of those uh, good runners in the team uh, check out here. Uh, Sara ran the fourth leg and she was uh, sixth fastest on that leg in Tumila. So excellent running there. Gained from the tenth place to sixth place uh, on the fourth leg. So uh, it looks good for Alftaios uh, at the moment. Uh. Yeah, but she will have extremely difficult job, I would say, because she will be alone in the forest. So she just have to stay relaxed and... <laughs> Do uh, do orienteering. That's true. And at the first intimate control, we are now waiting for here. Uel Norska and Silje Kroljaren. She was three minutes behind. What is the gap now? It's been now uh, soon two and a half minutes and uh, clock is ticking. I check out uh, at the former at 2.8 kilometers. Ravinen was uh, 14 and a half minutes behind there. Halden second team Dom Narvets. There is Karolina Ahoyskord running there but Dom Narvets although Caroline uh, has a gain from uh, 139 to already for the 86th place the Dom Narvets is uh, 15 minutes behind leading of the Ösa also Lin Chirping to the extreme running for Lin Chirping they are on the 88th place uh, 15 and a half minutes behind top teams uh, at the moment, so big, big differences uh, in women's race at the moment. But I think uh, now we are getting the second team. And is it uh, 
It's number 17. And it's Hiden Kiertet and Jenny Patana. Jenny is looking there. That's, is there coming any other teams? Uh, and there is Uel Norska also and uh, Sari Silje Krojaren. Jenny is also back from uh, baby holiday. They got a new little baby here a little bit under one year ago. Family got on a second uh, small girl in the family and uh, Jenny is back in business. Uh, Tisaren, Elinor Eriksson, four minutes. Uh, Emma Silvenoinen for Paimio Rasti. It looks good for Paimio also. A little sad news about the uh, new relay. We know that for Paimio Rasti, Frederick Portin is not in the team. Otherwise, uh, Paimio should, should have been one of the top favorites, but now it's a little bit... Uh, yeah, Sad news for Bayern, but still a tough team. I think um, when I see the start list and I saw that Inga Dambe didn't fit into the first team, she is uh, like a national team runners, runner for many years. So then I understand the team have to be really strong. Sara Norkrak on the next one and then uh, for Bayern. Ida Marines Björgul for the last leg, so it looks good for Bayern. Kore. And Rusty Carvut on eighth place. And the cap is now a little bit under five minutes. There were Kaiseris, Bu, Vendula, Korsichkova, and Tuja Kuusala. And there comes the next one. And that is Kangasala, Outi Hytönen. And after Kangasala, it's Ieko Muras. Olha Pachenko and Anni Hampa for Tampere in the second team. And Pan Christian start Nelly Clarkson. And there are the sisters, Nelly Clarkson now and uh, Aileen Clarkson waiting here. And they are Nui, their second team. Ingrid Gulbrandsen running now on the 13th place uh, when we are already waiting for uh, Josephine Heikka here beside the, the graveyard of Eno to come and uh, she should be soon, soon here. And this means that the caps are big and Josephine has been running very well. Uh, yeah, I think uh, women used uh, Gemberle at the first leg a little bit uh, over 45 minutes and now Heikka there 39 minutes 42 seconds used uh, on this uh, second leg and she has one con control to pick up before the last control, the last control here heading here towards uh, the last control and then uh, Yeah, this was a real strong race from Josephine, I have to say. That's true. And, uh, and there she goes. Uh, all the others conti going to continue, but Josephine uh, taking her own way to the second last control of the second leg. At the moment, when we are waiting for uh, waiting for uh, top teams and all players have to come to change over, uh, we see here uh, Josefin Heika approaching the second last control. We see also at MS Parma there has been uh, Gemuko, Göteborg, Nydalen, Pohjantähti, six minutes behind these women in the lead at. Uh, 4.7 kilometers uh, and also Fossum, Parma, Rutna are running for their uh, Iktisa, Ambrightside and now make mistakes uh, fall down. Jarla second team, Vargas, Anteanu, Orion and Keuru now on a 28th place, uh, eight minutes behind. So now, Jan, when I'm uh, saying it for you, thank you and uh, we see you in the evening. What do you say about these two legs? about women's relay.
Uh, it's uh, really, really interesting how the gaps are big and how the field is split. And uh, we will see what happened in the night of Yukola. And also, I will be watching the ra women's race quite carefully because I think now the, it might be that the crucial leg will be the next one, the third one. Uh, I will see if they can hold this lead, for example, up to Oza, because then yeah, it, they have run really well, uh, I think, and uh, everything is ready for a big victory with a huge gap. But yeah, uh, it seems to be a really interesting competition in overall. It's going to be Sara El Eskilsson against uh, Simone Negli. Yeah, I was just actually... Although, although Sime hasn't been running a so-called top level for a couple of years, and we all know that she knows what to do in the forest. Yeah, and I was checking her history, her mer merits, and actually she took her first gold in... Uh, Tampere and last in Vuokati yes. and she took 23 gold medals from the world champs so this could be a conclusion of her season <laughs> to win once more Yukola I think. that's true but uh, it's going to be interesting interesting last two legs uh, first a little bit shorter this uh, third one uh, it's going to be uh, third leg a little bit over a little bit under six kilometers so it's going to be very very interesting when we have now Josephine Heika heading towards a change here and no other teams yet beside the graveyard there and it's been over four minutes since she punched it there and we are waiting there for Hidenkiert at Norska Tiisaren, Palmyon, Rasti, Kore, Södertervi, Nykvan Orientering, Rasti, Kart, Kangasala, Muras, Tampereen, Pyrit, the second team. Those teams are next to come there and it looks very good for... Uh, and now they are there. Palmyon and Uwe Norska are together four minutes, 20 seconds behind. And the question is, where is Hidenkiert yet? After Ösa, at the change of the second leg 44 minutes 14 seconds used Josefine Heikka on this leg excellent work yeah so she was even faster than the first legs if I remember well or that's that's should check the uh, in a crowd about 45 38 so one minute faster yeah and uh, I was just watching her GPS all the time and it, it, it was really smooth uh, run and uh, perfect. Uh, you can see even from those light pictures that uh, of course there was this one when she looked back who is running behind. But maybe she was just disturbed because she was all the time alone and suddenly there was someone running in the same direction and same speed. And here is uh, Asko Pohjantahti and Heini Venman and she is approaching this TV control which we saw and making their mistake and then try to get back in business and a new mistake there later after that one and it's often like that when you make a mistake then you try to take it back pushing a little bit more pace yeah because you you can you like rest a bit when you are searching for a control then you can use more speed and it's really dangerous in this way i have seen a couple of like mistakes from you also like that okay <laughs> uh, it's possible <laughs> <laughs> but so have i done also <laughs> during my career but not in that top level as you have been doing so uh, after Ösa in the lead and the cap was there at the beside the graveyard over four minutes and here is now Silje Groljaren and Emma Silvenoinen at the last control and from there it's still quite a bit to run here to the change and there are Sara Norgrand and Simone Nigli waiting Norgrand for Paimi Rasti and Nigli for Uel Norska and then there was a small cap to Tisaren maybe 20 seconds and there comes Tisaren 
and Eleanor Eriksson to the last control. And uh, Eleanor Charnud is uh, the runner for the third leg. And then there was also a small cap from uh, Tisaren to Rasti Karhut, Hiden Kiertajat. They were uh, half a minute behind. Tisaren uh, And there they come when we have here Uelnorska and Paimio Rasti heading to the change and uh, as we said at the first leg you have to still have strength here to keep the pace on these last meters because it's a long long way from the last control to the finish yeah and uh, it seems still you have to use her elbows even like in the athletic to get through the first leg runners sometimes it's uh, quite narrow especially in those breaches but still i think you can find your space if you need to run faster quite smoothly she came through there and uh, now as a second team well norska here punching at the finish line and the cap is uh, Cap is now uh, from Well Norska. Four minutes and five seconds uh, to the leading Alfta Ösa. And only a couple of meters behind comes Elva Silvenoinen from Paimir Rasti and chasing there. And then uh, wait for the third and fourth and fifth team to come. Uh, there are Tisaren, Rastikarut, Hiden, Kiertajat coming next. And at the same moment, uh, we make a little change over here at uh, our studio. Jan Prohatska continues his work here at the uh, arena. And uh, Mari Laukkanen sits here beside me. How was it, Mari, in terrain? Yeah, perfect. And I can see that in Finland there's a lot of good arena rings, so... <laughs> I got pretty much help, and <laughs> I found my way back here. It went well. You were a little bit under 20 minutes behind the leaders here, so... I think it's better than I expected, yeah. But, yeah. That's good. And now we are seeing top athletes, uh, top teams coming to the second change. Uh, these are now on the fourth place. Uh, five, mi five minutes behind leading after Ursa. And there goes uh, Elinor Eriksson and gives the map to Elinor Charlund. We have noticed here that the caps are big. I believe it was quite demanding terrain for for the for you, and I believe it's been for the top athletes also. Yeah, I think there's uh, pretty much uh, high meters. I don't know how the orienteering tracks are usually, but it seems that there was quite much to climb and some. Um, um, difficult uh, forest parts where you really don't know and it's quite difficult to go through so the speed is sometimes really uh, really slow yeah so the visibility was uh, it was quite green in the this couple of parts uh, so far so um, but now uh, for in your team uh, Kaisa Makarainen running uh, second leg uh, what did you say to Kaisa when you gave the map to her Oh, I cannot say so much. Uh, she she's more experienced about the uh, rendering than I am. I just give a high five and yeah, send him send her away. <laughs> That's so. so now we have nine teams at the change. Hiden Kierte, Rastikar, Uko Kore, Kangasala, Tampereen Punta, second team and now IFK Muras on a tenth place, six minutes forty six seconds behind leading Alfa Ösa. And now I'm waiting for Sturatuna. Interesting to see the cap to Sturatuna. Söde Telenikwan orienteering there on 11th place, seven minutes behind. And there comes so Sturatuna. Seven minutes is the cap. And Julia Gross for Sturatuna. And then we know to Alexanderson, number one in orienteering. 
on the last leg, but the gap is now already seven minutes. But we all orienteers know that uh, Tuve took that uh, seven minutes gap in TU Mila and uh, came from the 10th place to the victory. Mari, you as a beginner in orienteer, what were the your main thoughts when you started? Is it just to use others' help and try to get through with I got pretty much advices that just uh, uh, tried to learn the numbers in different languages and <laughs> yeah, use them. But um, how many languages did you use? Five. five. No, <laughs> no, no, not really. Uh, no. Um, yeah, I, I think I had uh, only one goal today, so I wanted to stay calm and read the map. And I knew that my skills are not so high, so I should not get panic. That's the main point. And this is the um, this is also the part that I need for my own sport. Yeah. So I tried. Um, I need to uh, control my mind. Yeah. Stay calm. Stay calm and continue. Know exactly where you are, and then continue to the next point, and know again ex where ex you yeah. And I believe that is one one of those uh, lines to do also for the top athletes, because we have seen very big mistakes from the yeah. top athletes today. Twenty teams at the change as Kopohjan that on the 17th place, seven and a half minutes behind now at the moment. So uh, there are big, big gaps. Uh, Jyoti Mumaira, UK second team, uh, Runa Fremstad last to come to the chains and uh, Jenny Andersson going out uh, on a 20th place is uh, Majorna's second team and seven and a half minutes behind. And after that we are waiting for example KV, soon heading towards the change uh, and from the top teams. Angelina Ankuri, not yet here, soon heading there. Bargas EF now on a 21st place, then Ante Anui, 22nd. Next, we're waiting for AR Lynx Angelina Ankuri, also New Dalens. KV, Karolina Ukskoski were running for KV, and they were a little bit over 10 minutes behind, so soon should they be here at the stadium area. The stadium, it's in the middle of your home village. Have you ever seen so much people in Eno before? No, <laughs> it's quite, uh, it's really interesting to see it like this. Um, my high school was on the other side of the competition center and yeah, I, I've been joking that I know the area very well between the whip tent and the toilets, but everything else is quite, <laughs> quite difficult. Um, we haven't done so much orienteering in the school or something, so I was a little bit uh, disappointed about myself that I don't know <laughs> I don't know the places here so much and didn't got any didn't got any help I don't know is it uh, I think it's for good for the orientering somehow but <laughs> for me it's bad. So, so the heart about the hill wasn't the places where you went on the Friday evenings when you was young. No, it was no not really. It, there was a problem because after the school it was always dark like it is in, here in Finland in winter. <laughs> And we needed a drain in the other, uh, other training center here in Eno, where is the lights also on. So, uh, and anyway, I was a bit worried that they don't put the controls in the <laughs> in the skiing track, so wouldn't help so much. That's true. <laughs> now we have uh, top teams here: Angela Mankuri, ten and a half minutes uh, beh behind leading. There are also Lynx, uh, Rens Beko, New Dalens, Jamsa Retkivekot. Uh, KV, UK Orion, uh, Easy Rusty, Orion's second team, so both Orion team, Orion's teams there, a little bit under and over 11 minutes behind, and then comes Halden now on the 39th place, Eva Jurenikova chasing, and Holy Or on the third leg, and the cap is now 11 minutes 45 seconds when Holy Or is waiting to go out for the third leg, which is the shortest one of this relay. Place 36 is now um, uh, Parma 2, where there is, was uh, Katja Mjösund, which was uh, who was also our team doctor in the previous years in Biathlon. And she's also back in the orienteering, so she was a couple years out, I think, because of the health, healthy problems. And 
doing this on the side in the work, but it seems that it works, so looks yes. good. Yeah, it looks good for Katya. And Katya is also coming to commentate uh, Satol here tomorrow morning for the men's uh, Yukola relay 6th and 7th leg. Following this, uh, this relay, now we have uh, 43 teams uh, and it's been 12 and a half minutes since the top team changes. Uh, this means that the uh, Harvati terrain is demanding uh, demanding area. Uh, we could say, Mari, that you break through last winter when you took your first World Cup win, win at uh, Norway. It must be, it felt wonderful because uh, we have been waiting for you to break through and now you know what to do, what to make to win. Yeah, it's, it's a good experience that I, I can learn it somehow more. So it's the best way to learn to win is, is to win, you know, then you know what, to, what you need to do. And yeah, you know, I've been struggling with the health so long and I can see this also last winter that I was still, um, it's still there, but we can control it. And yeah, this is the main point for me now, um, um, road to the Poyangchang that I can stabilize my body a little bit more and just normal, make a normal work and then we will see what happen. That's true and it's uh, that just that, that you have to do it again and again and learn from your mistakes and it's a little bit like that in, in biathlon and in orienteering that you you never are ready. Yeah. I've been doing biathlon orienteering <laughs> combining these two things and <laughs> when you're not ready for the shooting and we're ready for your orienteering it's a mess. But yep, still, I can uh, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe that's a new sport for you. <laughs> yeah, I think no. this could be the worst of all. <laughs> so <laughs> I stay in here. What I'm doing now. I, I give a tip for the Finnish national team that Laukanen is interesting to compete in this summer in the, in Sweden for the World Championships. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just fast legs and running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but here is your home village uh, behind uh, the scenes and we are at the school center here in the middle of Eno and situation after the second left of the Ursa, one of the favorites in the lead and also one of the favorites well Norska behind four minutes is the cap and now the question is what does Simone Nikli, Mrs. Orienteering uh, do 23 times world champion during the years and now last couple of years Sime has been a little bit cooling down top orienteering but still she is a top orienteer so it's interesting to see what happens now there is Sara Eskilsson in the lead alone it's a little bit like you at the World Cup first time alone in the pole position going out for the chase start Tell yeah. me about it. Well, I think um, the main point is that you are just doing the same work like always. But that's, I think, is the most difficult point. So your mind cannot run over you somehow. And then, yeah, I think somehow it's, uh, for me, it's the easiest way because it's, you know, um, it's also not easy there, whereas a couple of others and you are fighting against the others and then when you're alone in the lead then you can do your own work and you don't need to care about anybody else but sometimes the most most of the time the head is running somewhere else so what do you remember is the worst thing that you have been thinking you have been skiing the third loop to the next shooting and then you notice that you are thinking about that did i have milk in my our refrigerator or <laughs> something like that yeah, I think the most uh, terrible thoughts are like that if you have been uh, missing um, example in the uh, first um, first shooting and then you are starting to think if I made a right amount of the penalty loops. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you're just thinking this through all the whole the race it's until a, the end and then somebody's telling you yeah, you made it right you and then right. you waste you wasted your energy for thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, in this terrain when you are running uh, in very demanding terrain, you have to be concentrating all the time. I have had sometimes when you it's easier orienteering and you just run and makes it some song is trying to 
is starting to play in your head, then that is terrible when you start with, no, I don't want to hear that one again. <laughs> yeah. I want to concentrate here. But, uh, but this has also happen. happened to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember also social media. You can uh, say your hello to Mari here beside me. Use hashtag YukolaLive and uh, Yukola2017 in Twitter or in Instagram showing your feelings from home sofas. We have it warm here at the Eno. It's been yeah. quite good weather. Was it warm in forest? Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but especially with the long loads. <laughs> this this I haven't get used to it that you need to weather but it doesn't matter about the weather, you need to have the long long pants. Yeah. 